Hello everyone, today's video is to hopefully help you when you are trying to dose over-the-counter children's medications when you're at home. Now, multiple caveats for this one. You can always call your pediatrician or your pharmacist for assistance. Most of these medications are marked with their dosing on the side and if you're ever not sure whether to go by weight or by age, it is almost always by weight because that's how we pediatricians calculate all medications. In fact, I wanna teach you, and this is hopefully gonna be short, quick, and easy, but I wanna teach you that the way you think about medicine is milligrams, the amount of the medicine, per kilograms, the child's weight, right? So we would say the dose for that medication is so-and-so mg per kg. That means milligrams per kilograms, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple of quick calculations, super easy, so you understand what I'm talking about. So I thought I would start with the, the most commonly used over-the-counter childhood medications, which are Tylenol and Motrin. First lesson, generic is fine. There are only a very few exceptions, some people with thyroid medicine and some people with certain birth control pills and, and probably some adult medicines, but for us, there is almost never a difference between the brand name and the generic medication. Now, sometimes with prescriptions, there may be some few nuances and certain prescriptions, according to your insurance, prefer it either brand name or generic. That's too complicated. For tonight, for us, for me talking to you, <laughs> generic is fine. So the generic of Tylenol is acetaminophen. The generic of Motrin is ibuprofen. Now, Remember, Tylenol, even though it is sold as both infant and children's, is all the same suspension strength. That's another thing you need to know in this calculation. So Tylenol liquid for children. Now be careful, there is an adult Tylenol liquid, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure why adults need liquids, but I guess there could be some funny throat situations where they just never did learn how to swallow pills. I'm not sure. But do be careful about that because there is an adult preparation for Tylenol. I learned when one of my children had to have their wisdom teeth out and he's allergic to ibuprofen. But anyway, um, so for children's preparations, they are all 160 milligrams per five mLs. Okay, so here's another thing you need to learn. If you were trying to calculate what your child's weight is in kilograms, you take pounds divided by 2.2 equals kilograms. So if you had a 22 pound child, they would be 10 kilograms. Remember this theoretical child because 10 is a really easy number to do math with, so I'll show you how all this works. Okay, so for Tylenol liquid, acetaminophen suspension, it's 160 milligrams per five ml. The reason that happened is because there were some cases of Tylenol overdosage, and it's tricky because the infant suspension was actually more concentrated. And if you think about it, on the one hand, that makes sense because you had, you know, a smaller amount of liquid to get into the baby. But unfortunately, if somebody heard the dose of the children's suspension but gave the infant suspension, they were giving twice as much as they should have because it was, you know, concentrate, doubly concentrated. So that was enough of a problem. And Tylenol is so toxic to the liver in overdosage that now all Tylenol, all acetamin suspension for children in the U.S. is all 160 milligrams per 5 ml. Now, ibuprofen or Motrin comes in still an infant which is 1.2, I'm sorry, it's 50 milligrams per 1.25. 50 milligrams per 1.25. So obviously if you were going for 100 milligrams, it would be 2.5 mLs, which is half a teaspoon. And then the children's suspension, so these are different. Always keep all your medicines up where the children can't reach them and always keep poison control center a number on your phone on so you can hit it for speed dial if you need to. But for children's suspension, it's 100 milligrams per five mLs. Does that make sense? So the children's is um, uh, more dilute. You know, it's, it's not as concentrated because this, if you double that at 100, it would just be 2.5 mLs, half of that. So this is twice. Infants twice as concentrated as the children's. So make sure if you are at a well visit and we're giving you the dosage for your child that you are certain whether we were talking about the infants or the children's 
And I know in my office, we'll just give you a dosing chart to take home so you won't have to do the math at home. I just wanted to explain what was behind it for your understanding. So you gotta know the weight of the child. We talked about that, divided by 2.2. You gotta know the suspension strength of the medicine, but then you've got to know the dosing, right? So let's talk about Tylenol. For Tylenol, the dose is 15 milligrams per kilogram of the child. And that's for like your maximum dosing. That's if they had uh, a pretty decent fever or they were in significant pain, such as postoperatively, something like that. And then the Motrin dosing is one or 10 milligrams per kilogram. So here comes my super easy math. If your child was this hypothetical easy math baby of 10 kilograms and they needed a dose of ibuprofen and you had the children's suspension, it's 100 mg per 5 ml, 10 milligrams for every kilogram, if they were a 10 kilogram a baby, they would need 100 milligrams of medicine. Well, that's super easy because that's 5 mLs. Does everybody remember about mLs? So, um, 5 mLs equals a teaspoon. Equals 1 teaspoon. We try to not so much anymore use the teaspoonage dosage because as you can see, it gets a little awkward when you're calculating. Um, we usually stick to the mLs because that's the suspension strength we have the medicine in, such as antibiotics. And if you're talking about um, 30 mLs, that equals one ounce. Because we're often using that in our calculations for a childhood medicine. Okay, so let's take that same baby and they're a 10 kilogram baby and we wanted to dose them with Tylenol. The dose for Tylenol is 15 milligrams per kilogram. So for that same baby, they would need, I'm sorry, 10 kilos, oopsie, 10 kilos, then they would need 150 milligrams. Well, 150 milligrams is mighty close to 160 milligrams. So they are practically a whole teaspoon. You could say 4.5 mLs. But so it, a lot of times what we're doing, if you notice us and we're able to give you the dosage of ibuprofen off the top of our heads, it's just because we're going by 10 kilos. So a 22 pound baby is a 10 kilo baby. A 44 pound child is a 20 kilo baby. You can see what I'm saying? A 66 pound child is a 30 kilogram child. So if you just said, my child's 66 pounds, how much ibuprofen can he have? I would say, Three teaspoons, 15 mLs, because for each 10 kilos, he was 66, it was 30 kilos. Does that make sense? So three teaspoons of children's liquid ibuprofen. Now the other thing to remember for these two in specific, acetaminophen and ibuprofen, is Tylenol is every four, four hours, and ibuprofen is every six. That's very important too. And ibuprofen you never want to take on an empty stomach or if they're having nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or you're concerned about dehydration in any way, stick with Tylenol, not ibuprofen, okay? And very importantly, Tylenol, we don't want any, either of these medicines before two months. Refer to my fever video, but if a baby under two months has a fever, that's a great big old deal and we have to do something about it. We can't just suppress the fever. We need to know if they have a fever to do an appropriate workup to rule out more serious bacterial infection. So they can have Tylenol after two months, um, if needed. And still call us, obviously, if it's a significant fever or any other issues. That's, that's not the point of our talk today, but that's obviously very important. But then ibuprofen, babies cannot have until they're six months old or older so that they're better able to process it because it's, this is liver and this is kidney. So it's important that they not have that till six months or older and that it not be in a dehydrated state or on an upset tummy. Um, so those are just two of the most common things so you can understand how they're dosed. But like I said, just ask us, ask your pharmacist. Keep them up out of reach where the children can't reach them. And then very quickly, I'm gonna do one more medicine and we'll save the rest for another video because I know it's hard to watch videos for long, especially if they're boring and we don't want it to be boring. So one of the most important ones for you guys at home to be able to dose appropriately is Benadryl. So Benadryl, also important to get the generic, well, to know that you can get the generic, Benadryl is, do y'all remember? Diphenhydramine. Now, in the US, it also comes all in the same suspension strength, which is 12.5 
milligrams per five mLs. Now, it also comes in a chewable that's also 12.5 milligrams, and it comes in the adult capsule is 25 milligrams. So if you had one adult capsule, that would be equal to two teaspoons, 10 mLs, of the children's liquid suspension or two of the chewables of the 12.5 milligram chewables. I think everyone should have in their medicine cabinet at home some Benadryl, again, up out of the reach of the children, but some form of medicine like Tylenol or Motrin for pain and fever and some for an allergic reaction like Benadryl. So the dosage for Benadryl is, people vary. You can, I usually just calculate it on one milligram per kilogram, but some people will say 1.1 or 1.2 milligrams per kilogram, but that just makes the math harder. So if you had a child who was, again, if you were doing your head and you said my child's 26 pounds, 25 would be roughly 12.5 if you divided it by two, it's 2.2. So if you said 26 pounds, I would say go ahead and do a whole teaspoon or five mLs. So um, let's say if it was that 10 kilogram child, then they would need uh, obviously 10 milligrams. So it's one milligram per kilogram. If it was a 10 kilogram child, they would need 10 milligrams. So they would get 10 divided by 12.5 out of those five mLs. So I usually just, you could say three fourths of a teaspoon you, or you could just round up to four mLs would be fine. So I hope you guys follow that math. It's really not as complicated as it might, I might be making it sound. But if your child, sometimes I get lucky and I look on the chart and the child's exactly 12.5 kilograms, woohoo, that's easy. Then they get exactly one teaspoon. Uh, now this is dose, children's liquid Benadryl is dose every six hours. And it can cause sedation, it can cause dry mouth, but oh my goodness, if, you, if I had to tell you personally, this is completely just an editorial personal comment opinion, Benadryl is probably the most <laughs> versatile, practical, and handy medicine to have available in your emergency kit for teens and adults with a panic attack it can help psychiatrists use it or something very much like it called hydroxyzine for panic attacks and it's not addictive. If you have um, just a short case of insomnia like you're traveling and your internal clock's all messed up, it can help you fall asleep on time because it causes sedation. If you have motion sickness, you could take it before the trip and it can help with motion sickness because it has an anticholinergic effect. If you have mosquito bites, poison, ivy, contact dermatitis, itchy rash, you can take it because it helps with rashes and the itchiness of it. If you have severe allergy attack, like um, you were bit by fire ants and you're allergic to fire ants, take a bunch of Benadryl and it can calm that huge histamine response. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It just does an enormous amount of things. So allergic to whatever, peanuts, seafood, it can be the, the first part of your treatment for a severe allergic reaction. If you just have bad seasonal allergies and it's bedtime and your nose is a mess, dripping, itching, sneezing, watery, itchy eyes, you can take Benadryl as your antihistamine. And it doesn't matter if you take it at bedtime if it causes sedation, because that's just gonna help you sleep a little bit more. So rashes, insomnia, allergic reactions, colds, allergies, it's just extraordinarily versatile. Motion sickness, panic attacks. So I would say everybody should be stocked up on this, both for your children and for yourself, given all those reasons you could take it. So I hope this was helpful, guys. If you did find it helpful, please hit subscribe and like so you'll get notifications when I make other videos. Thanks.